Hey, what's up guys? Tony from Tony Teaches Tech here, and today I'm gonna to do a walkthrough of me setting up my travel blog using the Generate Press WordPress theme. We're gonna look at a lot of stuff, everything from the Generate Press site library to customization and everything in between. So let's hop right on into it. Right, so here we go. We have my dashboard for my WordPress website. Let's just check out the website quick. It is bare bones, there's nothing here. Back in the dashboard, you'll see there's no plugins. And under appearance and themes, the only theme that I have is a 2020 theme. But like I said, we're gonna be working with the Generate Press theme. This is the premium version of the Generate Press theme. Um, I don't think a lot of what we're gonna do today is something that you can do with the free version of the theme. So um, how much, I can't even remember how much this costs but I don't think it's a lot. Okay, so $50 for unlimited websites, which is kind of reasonable. And I have, I'm hosting now like over five websites, probably half a dozen websites. So that's like $10, less than $10 for each one of the websites. Anyway, um, that's the Generate Press pricing. Once you sign up for a Generate Press account and download the files, you'll end up with two files, a plugin zip file and a theme zip file and that's what we're going to install right now so up here under themes on your wordpress dashboard you can click add new and upload theme choose a file and in your downloads folder like i said there's two files that you download from generatepress.com the first one is the theme generate press 2.4.1 or whatever version you are working with at the time so you go ahead and click install now and activate and now we have the Generate Press theme activated. One tip that I have for you guys, don't have multiple themes installed on your um, WordPress installation because every time it goes to update the theme, you're gonna have to deal with that. You're gonna get a notification. We don't want that. Just have one theme. So I'm gonna delete the 2020 theme since we're gonna be using the Generate Press theme. So we got the theme installed, but before we go into it and start poking around, there's a plugin that goes with the theme. It's a Generate Press Premium Plugin. So under Plugins, click on Add New and Upload Plugin. We're gonna choose the other file here, the GP Premium 1.9.1. Go ahead and install that now. Activate the plugin. This is the only plugin we have. Um, click on con Configure. And this is where you, um, over here, you would want to type in your uh, what is it your license key for generate press? So let me grab that real quick and paste it in here Okay, there we go and go ahead and save that and license activate it very good The last thing you want to do if these are not all activated you want to go ahead and do that I think because I had this in here previously they're already activated So that's okay, but just go ahead click them all activate and apply and then you're good to go now like I said I mentioned something called a site library with Generate Press, which is something that I recently found out about and I'm really happy that I did because it's basically, let's go into it, a whole bunch of demo sites that come with demo content, a, a, um, a look and feel that they already have pre-configured. And look at this, they got this whole page full of all these various configurations of how to customize WordPress. So you can literally click on one of these, click on preview, and see what your site could look like if you activate this this theme this it's not a theme it's like a sub theme it's a they call it a site library so down here which one we were just looking at um, this one we can preview that without even installing anything and see what it's gonna look like so this looks like really cool if you're if you're especially into like photography um, you can put all your your pictures in here and stuff uh, but this is not what I'm looking at. I actually know which site library theme that I'm interested in, and let's see if we can find it. Um, but while we're while we're looking for it, the one the other thing that I found interesting about this is that they have uh, e-commerce websites. So if you have an e-commerce website where you're trying to sell stuff, let's take a look at one of these. You can make an online business with one of these themes, which is really cool. I, I thought Generator Press was just for bloggers, but apparently it's not. It's for e-commerce as well. Very cool. Anyway, um, let's find that theme that I wanna work with. 
I do have this one from my Tony Teaches Tech website, tonyteaches.tech. It's the Boost site library theme. And going down here, probably passed it. I did pass it. Look at this one. Okay, I like Wordsmith. Wordsmith is a clean and minimal blog purpose for creatives build with GPP and only requires and requires no page builder. Okay, let's preview that. Now, the reason I like this is because it is already geared towards travel, right? So you have right up here on the page header, you have the camera and the laptop. So kind of like a digital nomad kind of feel. This is all something that you can change when we install it. You got the logo up here for the website. And what's really cool is because it is geared towards travel vloggers, photographers, all that stuff. You have all of your social media links, prime real estate up front and center at the very top of the website. So that is awesome. I'd like to take advantage of that with my own purposes. And then you have an about me section, which is really cool. A way to sign up for an email newsletter, which is something that I'm looking into and to have that already in my theme is awesome. An overview of some, some most recent posts here. And let's see what the tabs are in about page. I love the, the wide picture here, a small little gallery, some more words, a link to your contact page, the actual blog itself, which is just like a list of their most recent posts. Um, the style guide, I don't think, I think this is just to see how everything's gonna look like your header tags, header one, header two, header three, paragraphs, quotes, all that stuff. Looks good to me. And then a contact page. So I really like it. Um, let's go ahead and activate it. So it says, welcome to Wordsmith um, import options. So click on the import options button. And now this says, I understand that the setup will add content, site options, menus, widgets, and plugins to my site. It cannot be automatically undone. So all this means is that it's gonna add additional posts, additional pages, but anything that you have like post and pages wise is gonna remain. You're not gonna delete anything. It's only gonna add stuff. So if you do happen to have an existing blog at this point, don't worry about losing it. It's gonna be there. So. You can click on I understand that and you can import it. All right, everything's imported now. I think we're done. It says theme options, demo content, all done. Check, check, check. Very good. Now let's view our website. So what we had before was that basic bare bones 2020 theme website. Here is our new website. Very cool. So um, now we can start to do a little bit of configuration. So if we go Oh, and let me just show you before we do that. Um, here is all the blog posts that were imported. So they have exploring the beaches of Bali. You can see that there's the prefab content in here. So that's that's what it looks like. Um, you got some categories in here, photography, travel, pages as well. This is where we can edit all that stuff. And then uh, the appearance, if you go to appearance and customize, that's where we'll be able to fine tune and edit the theme. So let's go through some of their, this is the most recent auto save. No, we're not interested in that. Let's go through and fine tune some of these things that I want to, to update. So um, I do kind of like this look and feel in the front page where it has just the four most recent posts. So I'm gonna keep that the same. The one thing that I did notice that I did want to change was over here on the blog page when it loads. Um, I do I do think this is okay to have you know these longer linear setup, but I just want to show you guys that you can turn this into a grid really easily. So if you go into your layout over here and go to I forget if it's container. No, it's not container. It is blog. And at the very bottom, so we're looking at archives. Um, and just to show you, if you unclick this display post date, this will go away, the date right here. So we're working with archives, which is just like a collection of 
individual blog post, not the actual blog post itself. Um, if we go down here to the bottom, you can do display posts in columns. So now instead of having that one column, we have two columns. Let's just see what three columns looks like. It's probably going to get too small because of that sidebar. Hmm. It's okay, but yeah, I think I prefer two columns as opposed to three. And what I don't like is these tags underneath them. So how can we get rid of those? Well, just uncheck this box that says display post tags. Let's get rid of the categories as well. I'm the only blog author for this website, so I don't need that to show up every time. Do I like the date? I don't, because that's gonna be duplicate information that you're gonna see when you actually click on the blog post itself. It's gonna say the post date, and the post author. So let's go back to the blog section. Um, that's looking better. I think I want to, I'm not sure, this is just a post without a, a featured image, so we don't have to worry about that, but I don't like the, um, the big space between the picture and the heading. So uh, let's get rid of this word count too. Let's figure out how to, get rid of that space. So featured images here for archives, it says display the featured image if you don't want that, which you should have it. Um, you can uncheck that, but we're gonna keep that there. There is the image above the title, which is good. And we want to, so here's the width, the alignment, the center, uh, auto. So let's see if this changes much, no. Columns, I think we're gonna have to go into the topography section to do that. But before we do, uh, where's the read more? We, I don't want the read more. So if you don't want to say read more here, just get rid of that. And that got rid of the pictures too, which is not the expected behavior that I, read more. That's all I changed, right? <laughs> um, change back to, Auto. That doesn't do any. Oh, there we go. Okay, I think that was just a fluke. Um, anyway, let's go back to the topography. And under headings, I believe it's headings. We want to look at. I wonder what this is. Is it head one or head two? Let's just tweak some of these numbers. So, single content heading. It's not changing anything. That's not changing anything. There it is. So that this is changing the text size of these uh, the titles for each one of these blog posts. The line height. So that's adding spaces in between. So that looks like it's doing something close to what we want. But you have to be careful with this type of thing because when you go into your blog post itself, you're also going to be getting rid of that, that space. Um, let's see if we can change. The bottom margin looks fine, but if we go back here, oops, if we go back to our blog and change the bottom margin, it's not doing much. So let's get that back to where it was, 20. Okay, archive content title. I think, yes, this changes just the archives, not the actual blog post, and that is what we want. So you see this has big text for the title. Well, if you go back here, it has small text, so perfect. Let's pick a size that looks pretty reasonable. I like that. The line height. Now this is where we can minimize that to zero. And we can even change the font weight if we wanted to, so just make it a little bit thicker. I like that. Um, we don't like that. So we want the space above that to be changed. Let's check out the um, container layout container. So the container width is the width of the whole entire website. Content separator, spe okay, here we go. This has gotta be it. Yep, so we're making the pictures bigger by decreasing the separating space and the content separator there we go. Let's bring that down to right about one. 
I like that. So you got the, it's cl it's very clear that this picture belongs with this title. This picture belongs with that title. Let's just go in here to make sure everything looks okay. And it does. Actually, you know what? I'm exploring the beaches of Bali. I didn't catch that. That is um, small. I think I might have screwed something up. So let's go back up to topography, headings, and I probably never put the header two back to where it should be. So this is at 23. No, that's only changing. Oh, header. Yeah, I must have hit the header one. So header one, this got to reset. And this, let's reset. 40. Didn't change anything. Why is that not changing? Exploring the beaches of Bali. This is, sorry about this guys. I'm going to, I'll figure this out and I'll be back with you. Okay, I'm back. I, I do think it was another um, bug because I just went to the 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 style guide and then came back to the blog post and now it's big again so i think it was something with cash maybe uh let's just show you so yes this control under heading one is indeed what is changing the size of that so let's say not to make it too big let's do 35 i like that so you got your header one it's probably a header two and dig it okay so um I think it looks good. There's definitely more customization that we need to do with this website, but in general, I hope that gives you a good idea of what you can get out of the box with Generate Press, especially using their site library. So um, if you guys have any questions about Generate Press, Generate Press Premium, the theme or the plugin, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also consider subscribing if you got something useful out of this video today. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.